What's up guys? I guess at the tops of these types of videos, I'm supposed to do like a trigger warning or whatever, but I don't know, I figure at this point, you saw the title of the video, you clicked on it, it's now your problem and not mine. Anyway, recently I posted in the community tab asking you guys to send in your topic suggestions for some video essay ideas that I was thinking of doing. Thanks to everybody who sent in thoughtful suggestions. Something that came up that I was already thinking about doing a video on was eating disorders. Now, some of you guys may have read my recent article for the Huffington Post called My Life of Red Carpets, TV Shows, and Losing a Tooth from Purging. In that article, I lay out the history of my experience with eating disorders. I just kind of give you the play-by-play. -play. There are a lot more stories and material in my history with eating disorders, but since we've kind of been there, done that, for the time being. I thought for the sake of this video, I would focus on something else. I will link that article in the description box below though, so you can check it out if you want to. But for the sake of this video, I really wanted to focus on the eating disorder recovery process and what that was like for me in the hopes that if you're out there watching this and you're very early on in your recovery or you haven't entered recovery yet, that you might find this information helpful. First off, I'm gonna tell you two things that I think are really detrimental aspects of recovery. And then I will get into the three things that were most helpful for me and my recovery. First off, detrimental stuff. Number one, eating disorder recovery channels. Yikes. So when I first made the decision to get better, I found myself where I'm sure plenty of people do in this day and age, and that's on YouTube. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna check out these recovery channels. I'm gonna feel so inspired. Not so much, not even close. I found watching recovery channels to perpetuate my eating disorder at the time. Granted, I was very early on. Now I could watch eating disorder recovery channels and just either think like, oh, this is good content or bad content, whatever. But at that time, I found that I was making excuses for my eating disorder voice, which I will get into more throughout this video and making excuses for disordered eating behaviors. I was making justifications for myself because I was watching these people who may or may not have been recovered themselves. We don't really know, we can't know. All I know is that these recovery channels were doing 600 what I eat in a days. So to me, it seemed like, oh, this is an excuse for tracking. I'm way overthinking food and way, it's just in my mind, on my mind way too much. I gotta get away from these recovery channels. So. That's one thing that I think is very detrimental in recovery. Second thing is how expensive it is. I recognize the luxury that I was able to afford my treatment, that I was able to afford care to get better, the professional help that I gained so much from. I also recognize that that is not a luxury that many people can afford. And I hate that. It, it really, really bugs me. I just think treatment should be much more accessible for people. Where these two detrimental issues meet and come to a head and become very dangerous is that where do you think people are gonna turn if they can't afford help in something? Online, right? They're gonna look at some videos on YouTube. They're gonna try to get the help they need through YouTube. That is terrifying to think of people who don't have professional help, who don't have therapists, just thinking of them going on these recovery channels and potentially perpetuating their eating disorders. It's just like a minefield. That is so, so, so scary to me. So I bring up that issue so that if you are thinking about recovering, if you're already recovering, that you will just tread cautiously if you're looking at these eating disorder recovery channels. Please, please, please. So now the things that helped me the most with my recovery. Number one, DBT. It's dialectical behavioral therapy. There are four specific focuses in this therapy. You got mindfulness, distress tolerance, emotion regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. This is a very specific type of therapy and I don't think it works for all personality types, but for me, it worked wonders. It's a very pen and paper, therapy, you track your progress. I'm not a fan of, of therapies where it's just like, tell me your feelings, and you just, you know, whine for an hour. No, I want to whine and then find solutions so that I don't have to whine anymore. So DBT was that for me. I will link some basic info about DBT below in case you wanna learn more about that process and that type of therapy. Second thing for me, that was really helpful was identifying my eating disorder voice. The eating disorder voice is like that bitchy best friend who's not really a best friend, who is constantly being passive aggressive and kind of undermining you while she gives you a compliment, yet you still find yourself standing behind her arms akimbo, just like she's the best when you know that she's not the best, you know that she breaks down your soul every day. That's what the eating disorder voice is. This thing is so slimy. It convinces you that it's like your intuition, that it's like your potential that it knows what's best for you, it doesn't. Also, the fact that it can know best for you tells you that it's not you. 
if you're following my logic here. So identifying my eating disorder voice and realizing, oh, I have a voice underneath this eating disorder voice. The eating disorder voice unfortunately became much stronger, but now it's time to empower my own voice underneath that thing. That was an instrumental piece in my recovery. I felt such a strong sense of self after I identified that eating disorder voice and started taking the steps necessary to separate that from my own voice. Third most helpful thing in my recovery, filling the void. So this is something that I actually did touch on in my article. I mentioned that I thought once I went into recovery that I'd be like walking along a white sand beach slowly with my hair billowing behind me, just feeling like, oh, I'm better, I'm well now. No, that is not recovery, okay? Recovery is brutal. It takes so much out of you. It's emotionally draining. For me, my eating disorder was sadly a way that I was coping with the challenges of life. So getting rid of the eating disorder meant that I was now just coping with the challenges of life. It's not that the challenges of life went away, you know? It's just that now I can't lean on this thing to help me cope, even though it's not helping, it was killing me. Also in the article, I equated getting over an eating disorder to getting over a bad ex. Like a relationship that you knew was so unhealthy and so destructive to you and your health and your well-being, yet you still miss the person. That's what eating disorder recovery felt like for me. So that in mind, knowing the difficulties, the challenges there, what helped me the most get through those challenges was filling the void because there was that that emptiness, you know, there was this thing that had been ruling my life for so long, getting over it, I had a lot of time on my hands. When you're not spending time with your lazy, crusty, alcoholic ex, frees up a lot of time. My lazy, crusty, alcoholic ex happened to be an eating disorder. So I had a lot of time on my hands and I had to fill it. I filled mine with writing. I had always loved writing. It had always been a great outlet for me, a great creative resource for me. And it just took on a whole new meaning and gave my life a whole bigger purpose during that time. Writing for me was how I filled that void, but I suggest finding something, whatever your passion is, whatever your hobby is, whatever, just finding something that will satisfy you and fulfill you and make you feel good about yourself by doing it. That is all for now, guys. I definitely plan on doing some more eating disorder related content. Helping people who may be struggling with eating disorders is something I really, really care about and want to invest my time and energy in. I know the amount of time that I lost to my eating disorder, the days, weeks, months, years wasted on this thing, and I don't want anybody else to waste that kind of time. So if there's any way I can help, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do here. That's what I will continue to try to do. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.